Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from Detail Logic Design, and here we'll be solving end chapter question 4.2 on the combinational logic. I'm sure you have known these theorems and postulates, understood all these. So we'll be using uh, some of these. Also, there are some more important. Uh, simplifying boolean expressions these are given here and i'll be primarily uh, using this one and the basic concept here is that if you have a term let's say x and then there is another term with x dash then the third term if it contains the remaining of x that is y and remaining of z then this term will be equal to zero. As shown here, you can see x y x y x s z x. This term is not present at the output. That means this is equal to zero. Okay. Now this is the question, and it's a challenging question. So let's solve. Obtain the simplified Boolean expression for output f and g. In terms of the input variables, so input variables are a, b, c, d, and we have to find the value of f and g in terms of these. So, how do we start? We'll start from this point. First thing, this is an inverter circuit, so the output of this will be a dash. And this a dash will propagate to here this point and this point right a dash a dash here and a dash here next we'll solve this gate input gate so it's a simple and gate bc so the output will be b dot c or simply we can write it as bc and this bc will come up to this point so we have written that now the third one here is has an input a dash and d and this is a nand gate the best way to understand is that you first consider the and portion and then the inverter portion so we write a dash d a dash and d and then we invert it so this is the output here now this output is going at this point and up so we write the values there and now we'll solve this NAND gate. These are the two inputs, same technique. We form the AND part and then invert. This one is an OR gate. So A dash OR BC. Now this is coming here and here. We write that. And now we can write the equation for F and G. From here, you can see F has two inputs and it is an AND gate. So the output will be the AND of the two inputs. So the first input and the second input. And similarly, for G, it is AND of these two inputs. So the first input. But this is not the end. We have to actually simplify these which is more complicated. Let's see how to do it. The first one will open this bracket that will open the uh, inverter uh, sign. And we know when we open the inverter sign, sign inside of the variables changes. And if it is an AND, then it will become OR. That is what we do. The sign of A dash becomes A dash dash. This dot becomes plus, and this will have another dot. And we are not touching this, we're just copying it. Now, a dash dash is a, write it a. Similarly, this dash dash cancels, that is a dash d. And now we can multiply each term, so we'll get this relation. And now we'll use the formula x dot x dash equal to zero that means this will become zero so this is the remaining term 
Further simplification. First of all, we can el eliminate these two a's by one by following this formula. X dot x is equal to x. So this will write now a b c and this will be a dash d and this we are not touching. Now we can take common from these two. Taking a dash d common, we have 1 plus b c. And we can use this formula x plus 1 is equal to 1 or 1 plus x is equal to 1. Same thing. So this will become equal to 1. So this is our answer. Okay, we could have used the consensus theorem here. Let me show it. This theorem. So just copied this here. Now you can see there is an A here and A dash here. And this term we will have to now see does it contain the remaining of A and A dash. So remaining of A is BC, so it is there. And remaining of A dash is D, A dash or A dash D, it is there. Therefore this term will become zero. So from here this is our answer. So this is another way of getting the same answer. This is our final answer for F. And now for G, copy it. Same technique, we open this. So this will be A dash dash, it will become A. The dot sign here will become plus and then D dash. Multiply each term, get this. This is again zero. Formula. So we have this term, and now here I'll simply use the conscious theorem because you can see there's an a dash here and a here, and the third term contains remaining of a that is bc and remaining of a dash that is d dash. So this will become equal to zero. So we are using this formula. This becomes zero. So this is our final answer. And so the two answers as given in the book also, end of the chapter, so this is the answer that we have got. Now a point uh, to remember, how do we verify that our answer is correct? Or this is the, uh, this cannot be simplified further. So uh, I'm just taking the example, we calculated F and let's say we are up to this point and further we don't know how to solve it. And uh, we thought this is our answer. This is the final answer. So let me just arrange this this term, so it will A, B, C, D. And now we'll, I'll plot this in the K map. The K map is the best way of simplifying circuit. So K map of four variable. I plot A, B, C. This is A, B, C, A, B, and from here. I hope you know how to use k map and then a dash d a dash and this is d so we have this four process a dash d and finally a dash b c dash a dash b uh, sorry c d so we'll have a cross here okay and now we can form the loop to simplify we had one loop this and the second loop this one is ABCD and this loop is A dash D. That means our this answer is not the simplified version. So we have to scratch our head to find out the formula. And as we did in the uh, last slide, we, we took A dash D common, we get A plus BC, we use this formula to get the final answer. I hope you have been able to understand how we can solve this type of question. Most importantly, how can we verify that our answer is the simplest one? Please let me know through your comments. Thank you.